How's it going everyone? Welcome to another fighting game lecture. In this lecture, we're gonna be adding our debug event, which is a fun event to have because this way we kind of get to play test while we're actually playing the game. And that's the whole point. You wanna have controls that only you have access to because that way you can see what's going on behind the scenes with your game. Now the debug event, when you actually hit debug the layout, you actually do have a lot of settings to check. And that's not our debug event. Our debug event is just gonna control and toggle by making an on off statement that actually has items in it. So what I mean by that is, for example, this is something I would want in my debug event. And I'd want this to be able to go on and off. Same thing with a camera object, same thing with scores, something that I wanna test, things that are running in the background, maybe timers that I need to check. And it's a lot easier to program that in versus constantly having to switch to the debug event and versus the just running it normally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our game folder here in our event sheet structure. And I'm going to type in debug event. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get into the habit of going to my game event and hitting N on the keyboard and including our debug events. So when I go in there and I put this in our game event, just like this, I am going to now be including whatever code I put in here. So this is where I need to say that for those who have the personal edition of Construct 2, they are going to be able to do this to the full effect. But if you have the free version, so don't stop watching this, if you do have the free version, you can do this to the full effect. It's just going to be the same, it's going to be a different process where you have to do everything one at a time. And that's because the free version doesn't have access to families. Families let us group together objects as one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and make a new family. And if you are using the free version, don't stop watching this because I still think you will find a lot of useful information about creating an on off switch as well as you could still still do your debug this way. I'm gonna call this my debug family. And after that, I'm going to go to my debug family and I'm actually going to give my debug family an instance variable. Now I actually didn't even, I was talking and I did not explain that I actually put the object collision into this debug family here. So what I can do is I can right click on this and I can edit it and you can see all of the objects that are in our game so far. And I added our debug family. So let me just remove that. So this is all of the objects in our game. And I said, okay, things that I want to be able to debug. Since all of these are pretty much menu objects, I don't need to debug any of those. I definitely don't want to debug our player. I just need our collision object to be visible and not visible when I want it to be. So I added it to our debug family. Something else we'll add is our camera object when we make it. So now that we have this family, and if you don't have a family and you just have the collision object, do this as well. What we're going to do is we're gonna make an instance variable for it. So I'm gonna click on family instance variables. I'm gonna add a new one. I'm gonna call this our viz for our family. And I'm gonna make it a Boolean, which is a true or false statement. Now that I have our Boolean, I'm gonna exit out of that. And I'm gonna to go to our debug event. And I'm gonna hit add event system, start of layout, just so I can get going here. I actually think we may or may not add something to our start of layout. I'm not sure yet, we'll see how this goes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click and add a plugin keyboard event on key pressed. And the key that I'm gonna pick is gonna be T. That's gonna be my debug control to toggle our visibility. Now, now that we have this event here, I don't need any actions there. I need to hit B to make a sub event. And I wanna compare this viz family Boolean. I wanna know if it's false, what are we gonna do? If it's true, what are we gonna do? So here's how we're gonna code that in. I'm gonna double click on this blank sub event. I'm gonna to go to our debug family here. And I'm gonna say, is Boolean instance variable set? And this is gonna tell me if it's true or false. This statement right here is saying that it's true. So if I hit T, the first thing it's going to run is check to see if debug family is true, which right now it is not, it is false. So I'm going to copy and paste. I'm gonna right click and invert it. And now it actually has an event to trigger because it is false. So I'm gonna press T, I'm gonna see if this is true, it is not. So if it's false, what is it going to do? And we know it is false because that's what it is set to by default. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to flip these back and forth. And this is where making an on off switch is extremely important. And if you haven't done this in Construct 2, or you probably have done this and it probably hasn't worked for you because you don't realize that Construct 2 will not be able to catch up. It's very, very subtle, 
but it won't be able to catch up to your on off logic. And it's something that you kind of have to work around, but here's how we're going to do it. So what we're going to do is if it's true, then we're going to set it to false because it's already true. So that's the next, that's the next logical action. So I'm going to say, if it's true, then I'm going to add the action for a family to set the Boolean value to false and vice versa. I'm going to control click this and set it to true. So that way we complete our on off loop. It's a little bit weird, but just remember that these go diagonally and you should be good there. That's a cool tip. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to set the visibility because that's the most important part here. So what we need to do is we need to add the action for if it's true, we need to go to our debug family and we need to type in set viz and we need to make it false because now we're just invisible. So now we just need to make it go away. And if I control click, I'm gonna double click that and change it to visible. So if it's not true, it's going to be set to visible. If it is true, it's going to be set to invisible. It's a little bit confusing. It does get really, and I still could have these backwards because it gets so confusing at times. But let's hit play, let's see what happens. And nothing happens. So let me go to my game layout. Let me click on my collision and let me make sure that my initial visibility is on as visible. And that's fine, that doesn't matter that much. But in our debug events, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make a way, and this could be backwards. I could be going crazy. Let's see. And Construct 2 is going to go a little crazy. Let's hit play. Okay, so I did have them backwards. Silly me. See, these kind of loops can really become confusing if you don't uh, handle them all the time. And if you just kind of get tripped up. If it's true, set it to false and set it to true. If it's false, set it to true and set it to false. It's very backwards like that, but at least we got it. So now you're gonna notice when I hit play, and when I hit T, that it doesn't come back. And it should, right? This is pretty much where everyone gets stuck. It should come back, but it doesn't. And here's why. Construct 2 can't catch up to check if these are true or false. It literally just cannot catch up in time every single time you hit T. So we need to actually make it wait. We need to make it wait, and then that wait is going to let Construct 2 catch up and check what the debug family Boolean is equal to. So if we waited a second, that's way, 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 way too much time. We're gonna wait to 0.01 .01 milliseconds. So let me do that, let me control click this, and now by putting this first, it's going to actually give Construct 2 enough time to go back and forth. So let me hit save, and let me hit play, and let me hit T, and let me hit T again and, again, and 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 it won't break. So that's the really important part when it comes to making an on-off switch, as long as you get these right as well, of course. But that's really the main logic behind it. Now, we don't really need this start of layout, so I was wrong there, and I can delete that. But now, look at this. Our debug event is literally three lines of code. All you have to do is add other, f other objects to that family, and I realize here that this is a little backwards, let me put that back. All you have to do is add other f objects to here, right click and edit on it. Now, if you are using the free edition, make sure that you're doing this for every single object. I do apologize, that's how you have to do it, but you maybe can, you can get creative with it. Maybe you can just get the personal edition. I think you're better off in the long run if you are serious about making games like this, but I really hope that this lecture helped you out a lot because it's a really important one and I really, really do like this technique. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.